When you get into filmmaking, everything you read and see puts limits on what you're able to create. To make a movie, you need a grip, gaffer, sets, locations, crew, an agent, this camera, this lens, HD, 4K, 8K, stop! You don't need all that stuff. This is a list dedicated to the filmmakers that said no to all that and made their movie with what they had available. What if we financed the film ourselves and said fuck you to the gatekeepers telling us no? Why do you need $160 million to tell a story? Not about money. It's about sending a message. These are my top 10 movies made for less than $30,000, and I'm gonna do you the favor of skipping movies like El Mariachi, Blair Witch, Clerks, and Paranormal Activity. That's fucked up, man. What did he say? Every top no-budget list has these movies, then lists others with budgets in the hundreds of thousands. These are great no-budget movies, but I want to try and list and introduce you guys to new films you may not have heard of. I want this to be for the self-financed movies, the true no-budget filmmakers, making it happen when no one else would give them a shot. Let's jump right in. Number 10, Permanent Vacation made by Jim Jarmusch in 1980 for $12,000. An introspective film about a young guy whose parents aren't around and wanders through New York looking for some meaning to his own life. For the average viewer, this will definitely lull them into a nice nap, but considering the limitations of the time and the budget, this is an interesting exercise in filmmaking, even if it comes off a bit amateurish. The dance scene is unforgettable, and you have to appreciate the realistic characters Jarmusch is able to create. Jim Jarmusch is in a bit of an acquired taste for some, and the average viewer may not be overly stimulated, but the style, individual and quirky characters and the relationships are the focal points of the film, and the movie itself is worth studying for anyone interested in low-budget filmmaking. Number 9. Carnival of Souls, directed by Herc Harvey in 1962, made for $30,000. Easily the most expensive film on this list, especially when you account for inflation. But you also have to account for the inaccessibility of camera equipment in 1962. And remember, this movie was made six years before the infamous Night of the Living Dead. Connor of the Souls is the original low-budget masterpiece that set the stage for George Romero to make his movie. It didn't get the marketing or overall success of Night of the Living Dead, but it preceded the low-budget horror films that are so popular today. Number 8. Bad Taste, directed by Peter Jackson in 1987, made for $11,000. Directed by none other than Peter Jackson, the Lord of the Ring himself, this is the film Jackson finally cut his teeth on after making short movies and film props for years. Yes, Bad Taste is fun, and I mean really fun. It's the movie I would have wanted to make throughout my childhood, but Peter Jackson took it to the next level. Jackson filmed on weekends for four years, casting his friends as main actors, and mostly funded the film himself until the end of the shoot when the New Zealand Film Commission gave him the money to finish the project after being impressed with what he'd already produced. Number 7, Eraserhead, directed by David Lynch in 1977 for $10,000. David Lynch created a profoundly strange film that is undefined and open to interpretation. As with most art films, the point is to watch it and apply your own meaning to the film, and that's ultimately what it's meant to be. The consensus for many viewers, however, is the movie is a translation for anxiety and the subconscious and the events that occur alongside the real world. Most see it as the fears of becoming a father and the terror it instills in the main character. Portrayed as most would describe as a nightmare, the movie goes on, the events become more obscure, and the main character Henry's regret for his decisions and his emotional turmoil takes the film in some interesting places. The movie was made in fragments over five years, with sets having to be rebuilt after being torn down. The 22-page script on paper left most backers less than interested. But after converting this unusually short script to film, it launched Lynch to fame and started a massively successful career for the young director. Number 6, Newlyweds, directed by Edward Burns in 2011, made for $9,000. Newlyweds is the lowest budget that Edward Burns has ever worked with, and the whole production only occurred over 12 days in New York. A very smart comedy where the humor arises from the characters and the dialogue, the film revolves around a newly married couple that have both been married before and seem to have a plan for the perfect marriage. They both have opposite schedules and attempt to be individuals and live their own life while trying to make this marriage work. When one of the main character's sisters shows up, and the rest of reality with her, they find their way may not have been the best plan for a successful marriage after all. Edward Burns is a successful leader in micro-budget filmmaking arena, especially since he's an established filmmaker. Seeing him and other bigger name directors moving towards working in low budgets, not necessarily by choice, but because of the closing doors of the industry and the prevalence of remakes and sequels is extremely inspiring. Number 5, Slacker, directed by Richard Linklater in 1991 for $23,000. 
Link later defined a place, a time, a counterculture, and a generation with this film Slacker. A movie driven by dialogue follows many different characters on one day in Austin, Texas. The dialogue is delivered with spontaneity and sounds improvised. You, 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 you should, you should never traumatize a woman sexually. And there are a good amount of long takes in the film that make it much more impressive for the astronomically low budget they had to work with. Many filmmakers have credited Linklater with paving and leading the micro-budget filmmaking boom that occurred in the 1990s. Even Robert Rodriguez has said that seeing Slacker changed his perspectives on filmmaking. Number 4. The Puffy Chair, directed by Jay and Mark Duplass in 2005 for $15,000. The Puffy Chair is a very personal movie. The characters feel like old friends you used to hang out with, with the same problems you have with relationships and family members every day. The whole movie revolves around a road trip to get a chair as a gift for their father and the main character's relationship with his girlfriend, whether or not they're going to break up or stay in the relationship and make it work. If you're a micro-budget filmmaker and you haven't heard of Mark Duplass or watched any of his and his brother Jay's movies or TV shows, you're doing it wrong. The guy is writing the book on how to make it in the industry today that's scared of making anything other than remakes and sequels. A lot of his movies are available on Netflix, and all one has to do is search his name to find all his work. Number three, Primer, directed by Shane Carruth in 2004 for $7,000. Wrapping your head around how they made this movie for $7,000 will be almost as difficult as wrapping your head around the plot of the film itself, seeing as the movie was shot on film, and this is where almost all the budget went to was film stock. The story revolves around two struggling inventors trying to create an anti-gravity machine and accidentally end up creating a time machine. They eventually make them large enough to fit in and send themselves back in time, and this is where it gets weird. In my opinion, this is the best time travel film of all time, and Rian Johnson, the director of the newest installment of Star Wars The Last Jedi and Looper also claims it is the best time travel movie ever made. Number 2 following, directed by Chris Nolan, made in 1998 for $7,000. Almost the top listing for every low-budget movie list ever made is Christopher Nolan's first feature film. Following, to me, is the best movie in terms of story and raw cinematography on this list. While this is Christopher Nolan's first feature movie, you have to understand that he'd been working in the medium for years and years before getting the opportunity to make this film. Nolan filmed on weekends and free time over the course of a year. He used his friends as actors, and the majority of the film is shot handheld because of the logistical difficulties of setting up a camera while having to get through a feature film. To overcome this, the beginning sequence of the film was filmed in a studio, with Dolly intricate lighting and static shots in an attempt to subconsciously tell the audience that the handheld technique was intentional and cover up that they didn't have the money to do big set pieces for every scene. And number one, Four Levers Only, directed by Michael Polish for $0 in 2011. Let's be clear, following and Primer are the better movies, but from a filmmaking perspective, I find Michael Polish's movie insanely fascinating and inspiring. We can give Nolan credit for all of his budget being spent on expensive celluloid film, even though we all know if he had digital available, he still wouldn't have used it. However, Michael and his twin brother Mark Polish made this film for the price of food, a hotel room, and a trip to Paris, which he claims he was going to be going to anyway for vacation. The reason why I chose this film as number one is because I think it is the most relatable to for the average filmmaker to attain and strive for. Grab two 5D Mark II DSLRs, each of which you can buy for about $500 now. Equipment that they already had, get an up and coming actress friend with a huge social media following to act in it, Stana Kadic. Shoot the film for nothing revolving around interesting characters and the beautiful backdrop of Paris. Make it black and white to save money and time on color grading footage then upload straight to video on demand to make $500,000. If you're interested in making micro-budget films, I highly recommend you study four levers only and consider making a movie in a similar fashion. Video on demand is a viable option for distribution with your no-budget feature. That's my list for my top 10 micro-budget films made for less than $30,000. Do you guys agree with my list? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. And like always, guys, keep pressing record.